Hey guys, welcome to Flat Top King. Today, it's all about inspiration. I ask you guys all the time, what do you want me to make? My wife has chimed in and said, I want you to make this. You've made it in the past and it was fantastic. We got the idea from a local restaurant. It was fried green tomatoes and cheese grits and they put a little marinara sauce over top. Absolutely love it. So today, we're gonna to do my take. All right, we got some meatballs, some Italian sausage. I've already made my grits. I'm gonna show you guys that video right now. All right, take the tops off of your garlic. I cut about a quarter of the top off. Aluminum foil, the oven set at 375. A Little bit of olive oil. Don't worry about seasonings. And go ahead and wrap it up and we're gonna cook it in the oven for an hour. I got two cups of chicken stock in here and this is just the garlic cloves I've squeezed out, okay? One cup of heavy cream. I'm making this grit slash polenta according to the package instructions. Okay, so the package instruction says basically three cups of water to one cup of the of the product. Okay, so that's very important. Whatever ingredients you get, make sure you keep it, you know, consistent. All right, let's add some salt. I'm not gonna add too much because the Parmesan cheese that we add later is gonna be salty. Go ahead and add some fresh cracked pepper. So one cup of grits. My wife said I wasn't clear. I'm sorry, this has to be in the video because we're in a downright argument. It's a three to one ratio, three cups of water to one cup of grit. She said that I should have said that to replace the water, we've added two cups of chicken stock and one cup of heavy cream. And no water. You still. <laughs> it's a three to one ratio. This is going in the video. It's a three to one ratio. I'm only replacing water with flavor. Isn't that what we do every time? Water, flavor. Chicken stock and cream and water. Chicken stock and cream. My rant's over. <laughs> Thank you. And we're gonna stir this constantly. Now, this is gonna take about probably 12 to 15 minutes, bring it up to temperature. And we're just going to keep stirring and keep stirring. The grits are slowly going to start absorbing this liquid. And right at the very end, we're going to add four tablespoons of butter and some Parmesan cheese. All right, we got the grits to where we want them to look like. Notice how much of water they've absorbed or liquid they've absorbed. Um, you see how creamy they are? That's what we're looking for. So now we're going to add four tablespoons of butter without the paper. We're gonna stir those in and let that butter melt. So this is what I've done. For all the people that's given me grief about my green crap Parmesan cheese, I've heard you. So today, I didn't add it. I upgraded. Went to the bank, asked for a loan, and got the $23.99 a pound cheese like this. So that's what we're using today. We're gonna to add a cup of that right into our cheese grits. Let that butter dissolve just for a second. There we go. All right, add the cheese, and then I'm just gonna make the transition and just fold that in a little bit. Take it off the heat, just like that. All right, I've just got an eight by eight. Spray the sides and the bottom really good. One last mix. See that cheese in there, making those shreds? Just take some plastic wrap right over top and just touch the top of the grits with them. This stops the skin from forming on the grits. All right, we're gonna let these refrigerate overnight and uh, be ready for the next day. All right, now that you see how easy it is to make those, I've just got some bell pepper and onion. This is completely optional. We just thought that it would be nice to get a little crunch to go along with everything else and your standard, however you want to make it, garlic bread. Before we get started, because I know somebody's going to say it, yes, I've got store ball meatballs. I don't have Italians in my family, and I sure in the heck do not have a world's greatest meatball recipe. If you guys want to share one, I'll be more than happy to look at them. But to make it easy, 
Today we're just using fresh meatballs. Okay, so we got meatballs, Italian sausage. We're gonna get those going on the flat top. Let me show you how I'm gonna do my sausage. Basically, I'm just gonna take them, cut them in thirds for a little bit larger chunk, about the size of the meatball, right? So maybe about right there and right there. I just got a little store-bought meat or uh, sauce right here. You guys add whatever you want to. It's been preheating for a good bit. Just set this off to the side, let it come up to temperature. Just a touch of oil. And let's start browning our meat. So what we're gonna try to do is basically cook our meat about 75% of the way through. While it's cooking, we're just gonna keep tossing and tossing and tossing and turning so one side doesn't get darker than the other. From there, we're gonna put everything in the sauce pot and continue to cook in the sauce. I'm just gonna add a little bit of water for steam. Look, when you're using the pit boss, don't be scared of metal tools. You don't want to use metal utensils. The metal tools like a, um, um, a cooling rack, a, a pot, or even our dome. Um, as long as you're not moving around and being rough with it, it's completely fine. With the, the pot, you can't close the lid to create that convection of what you would want. So there's no reason to be worried about putting a dome on there if you're just placing it on there. All right, so while our meatballs and sausage are still cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and make the, uh, the, the grit cakes. Now, this is my preference. There's a bunch of ways to do it. I'm not double dredging today, and I'm not doing the three-step method. This is fresh fr uh, fish fry mix that we use all the time. It's a cornmeal base that's already pre-seasoned. And I've also got some uh, panko breadcrumbs in there, okay? I'm not looking to deep fry, I'm just looking to change the texture, okay? Once you fry these, I like to put them in a Pyrex dish versus a sheet, a sheet tray because I like the thickness of the grits. What happens is the outside fries while the inside warms up and gets all gooey and cheesy and all that stuff, but you get that, that, um, that texture in your mouth that just changes everything. It is so good. All right. Yeah, if my wife requests carbs, Exactly. Big Daddy makes carbs. Big Daddy <laughs> makes carbs. And if I'm willing to spend my carbs on this, then you know it's good. <laughs> Amen to that, sister. Cut them in whatever shape you like. That does look like a good shape to me. All right. They stay together. And we're just going to lightly dredge them. I'm sure somebody out there is going to say, oh, he's not using gloves. Nope. All right, just like that. Just like a light coating. You see that? All right, I'm going to say these are pretty close to done. So I'm going to move these off and start letting these simmer in the sauce. All right, now that that's done, I'm going to put a lid on it. Just let it go. Just leave it alone. We want all that uh, leftover fat and grease from the Italian sausage and meatballs. And that's where I'm gonna add the peppers and onions just to pick up that flavor. When you're using a flat top like this, you have an advantage that a lot of people don't use. It's deglazing, okay? Deglazing takes all that fat and all that flavor that was just left over instead of just adding water scraping it off and throwing it over now i'm cooking my vegetables inside of it which is allowed it to pick up those uh bits and pieces right because of moisture from the vegetables so i'm just going to cook these until they're soft once they're soft i'm going to put those in the sauce for more flavor all right we got our grit cakes we got a clean surface just find your little landing spot well each one of them Just right inside that oil, just like that. All right, just move them up a little bit. Give yourself a little bit more landing space. Get that oil on there. When they're lightly brown like that, that's what you're looking for. I've already made the decision. I don't need two or three times. I've cooked on this without videoing and I've used these wooden spatulas and I'm sold. I told you guys, give me a couple chances. These things are absolutely phenomenal. And I also have used it on my camp chef the other day. 
I love them. So go ahead and see if that's something you guys might be interested in if you got one of these pit bosses. All right, we're gonna take these off. Just like that. All right, let's make these jokers fancy. What do you think? Who says griddle cooking can't be fancy? Take you a couple sausages. Take you some of that tomato sauce and peppers and onions. We ain't done yet. Just like at the old Olive Garden. Just tell me when. Woo, look at that fancy shredded cheese. That Parmesan cheese on there, look at it. Mm, just automatically melting right into that sauce. Honey, you gotta tell me when. Oh, when. Dang. <laughs> I didn't know you were really waiting on me. <laughs> Those poor waitresses and waiters at Olive Garden. All right, just pick you some fresh basil. Look, when you shift an odd, all you do is just take the leaves roll it up and then make small strips. Okay, just like that. God, oh, that looks good, honey. I mean, if you wanna impress someone, Hi. you can make this dish. Now that's what I call, mm. you know we're excited. Hey, anybody can make a smash burger, you know? It's stepping the game up. Step the game up on the griddle. Just think outside the box and make what you like. Hey, make something, tag us on Facebook. You can find us at The Flat Top King or you can do The Griddle Group by The Flat Top King. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends. We got serious today. We mm. never try to bite. Who needs to? Let's eat. <laughs>